On Wednesday, members of trade unions Sapawu and Giwusa gathered on the streets of Rosebank as part of the current strike. They planned to hand over a memorandum to Sasol, whose headquarters they were protesting in front of. The strike began with only one busload of people, but police, who were plentiful in the area, were obviously expecting a bigger crowd, and maybe even a little trouble, as they came armed with a fully equipped riot vehicle, complete with water cannon. They seemed to be correct, as more buses began to arrive, and people joined the crowd. However, all the people did for a long time was sing and dance, waiting for more people to arrive. And while the people who were already there were showing off their impressive dance moves, more buses were certainly on the way. Apart from the couple which got lost, approximately four other buses arrived, and the crowd had grown to around 600 to 700 people. They continued the singing and dancing before making their way towards Sasol for the handing over of the memorandum. We are going to give them a memorandum, a memorandum that contains your demand, a memorandum that talks to them about your plight in your workplaces, in Ekandastria, in Secunda, in Vets, in Free State, parts of Pretoria, and so on. Under a heavy police presence, Sasol management was waiting for their group when they arrived. After a brief introduction between Sasol management team member Rian Radaman and Sepawu president Jacob Mabena, Mabena read out what the memorandum said and the demands that they want met. Our strike is a direct response to the systematic and ruthless exploitation of our members on the part of the capitalists in these industries. And today, we are marching to hand over a memorandum of demands to Sasso and SAP. We are focusing on these two capitalist corporations because they are part of monopolies that dominate the petrochemical and pulp and paper industries respectively. These two monopolies have also through the, the sweat and labor of our members, they have become multinational corporations with a plan throughout the world. It is these monopolies and other like P.G. Bison, Nampak, Alcock, Ingram, Aspen, Famke, that are responsible for making South Africa the most unequal society in the world. Sasol in 2010, I think you'll, you'll be interested to listen to this one. Sasol in 2010 paid its executive directors on average 19.7 million. <laughs> A Sasol worker earning a minimum of 4,000 per month and that 4,000 per month will make a worker to sweat 402 times just to be equivalent to the executive director who earned millions of friends 
in one year. Despite breaking our backs and sweating in front of Medellin for the past 12 months, the capitalists reject our demands for a decent wage and living standard. Our demands are legitimate. We have a right to a living wage. Long live living wage. Long live. Long live. In the light of the circumstances facing our members throughout the country, is that we demand a double digit across the board, that is 11 to 15 percent. We want a minimum wage of at least 6,000 rands. South Africa is a democratic country. We say any worker who joins the union, that worker must enjoy the savings of that union. And we want the scope to include those workers outside the bargaining unit category. And we want labor brokers and temporary workers to benefit out of the settlement that we are going to reach for 2011-2012 financial year we want labor broker broker workers and temporary workers to be employed permanently those few women that you see here women that work in our sectors in the coastal regions we are saying they can't be robbed of their right to earn a full salary when they are pregnant we know your wives they don't need salaries because your salaries can afford to run your families we are saying as workers we cannot afford to have a woman worker whose salary that will be cut simply because that particular worker is pregnant. And therefore what we say is that you need to maintain the six months fully paid maternity leave. We are saying those who are not working 40 hours work week, we want them to work 40 hours work week as from 1st of July to June next year. We are also saying those who are working continuously who may not necessarily be able to work 40 hour work week, we want that particular extra hours to be paid as a bonus. For legal purposes, he has got to put a signature to this memorandum so that we can be able to report back to other workers who are not here that indeed the employer has received this particular memorandum. Comrades, can we have a pen? I know which is a seven hour peak. Let them use their expensive pen. After the memorandum was handed over, it was signed by both parties. However, that was not the end of it, as Radaman and Mabena exchanged final words. Good afternoon, colleagues. I accept the memorandum that was given to my colleague uh, Jacob, and obviously we will study it. My colleagues have also told me that we've made very good progress at the negotiation table. And I believe that, and I hope that we will get to some resolution quite soon. And now that you said you will study the demands, we want to say you are not going to study forever. We are giving you 24 hours to come back to us. And uh, if you don't come with something on the table, 
in those sectors where we still need to meet. You must know that the strike will continue. For as long as you haven't put something fertile, something fruitful onto the table, we will not retreat, we will not surrender. We will go to the fourth week, we will go to the fifth week, we will go to the sixth week.